Hi! In the video I made uh, about never giving up, I said a couple of times that um, if you don't understand, it's not always your fault. In many ways I would say it's never your fault. Okay. Um, but as a general rule, as a general observation, when Japanese students hear something and they don't understand, they always feel it's my fault. I don't have enough English. My English isn't good enough. My vocabulary isn't good enough. My listening isn't good enough. They always blame themselves when they don't understand. In this video, I'd like to talk about understanding. Uh, and I'd like to really show that in many cases, in most cases, maybe all cases, it's not your fault that you don't understand. Okay? Uh, and you should never feel bad about not understanding. I think in many ways this is one of the key differences in the way other Asian nations, people in general, speak English. Chinese people don't feel bad when they don't know or if they don't understand. They just say, what was that word? What do you mean? I don't understand. Say it again. Um, Japanese person's like, I'm sorry. Okay, that's a little bit of a generalization, of course, okay. Um, but it, it's true in a lot of cases. Um, in terms of actual English speaking ability, I don't see a lot of difference between the quality of how a Japanese person speaks, a Chinese person, a, a, a person from Thailand. Um, however, when it comes to not understanding something, the difference is very big and very clear. And Japanese people in general feel bad, feel guilty for not understanding. Um, during uh, week one of this current course, um, I set my students 12 sentences to listen to and respond to. Uh, it was a listening exercise at home at first, but then we also did it in the class so that they could respond to me and ask for help, ask me to reformulate, and I would give them more help and keep on explaining until they understood. What was very interesting for me about that exercise was all levels of students, beginners, intermediates, advanced, basically couldn't hear, couldn't understand any of these 12 sentences. I said 12 sentences and the first time they understood none of those sentences. But after we went through the exercise and I showed them the 12 sentences on paper and said, do you have any questions? Nobody had any questions. Basically, all the English words they understood, all the problems they'd had, all the problems they had were not really English problems. What do I mean by that? Well, I want to give you an example. This example has been next to me on the board since I started talking. Uh, one of the sentences I gave people was, you need an oyster card to use London transport. Uh, I don't think you'll be surprised to know that most people couldn't catch that the first time. Uh, and even after I slowed down, you'll need an oyster card to use London transport. Even if people know oyster, okay, they don't know oyster card. Well, that's not their problem. An oyster card uh, is, a, is a card that you prepay and then use on the London subway system, the underground or the tube, you use on the subway and the bus in London. If you live in London, everybody knows Oyster Card. If you live in England, most people probably know Oyster Card. Uh, if you come from America or Canada, you won't understand Oyster Card. If you come from France, 
I actually heard a French person going, a what? A, a what? An oyster card? You call it an oyster card? Why do you call it an oyster card? Of course, because, you know, it's no meaning except within that culture. Uh, so, even though a Japanese student could understand all these words, they couldn't understand this sentence. But the problem is not English. The problem is, in this case, cultural background. Of course, if they study more English, maybe they will find in their reading, in their textbooks, maybe they will find Oyster Card. But maybe not. But it doesn't matter. As I've said before, it doesn't matter because you can ask for the meaning. The person who says Oyster Card can explain Oyster Card to you. So, I said I wanted to talk about understanding. This sentence shows that even when you understand every word, if you're not from that culture, that's not going to be something you understand. This started, got me thinking. This made me think about successful communication. When do we smoothly communicate with somebody else? Well, uh, it helps if we are very, very similar. That's when communication is easy, when two people are very similar. If you have the same speaking style, by this I mean, for example, if you come from the same town, you are going to maybe speak at the same speed as other people, uh, you're going to have the same accent as other people. It's easy to understand each other. But if you're from a different town, then even if your town is only five kilometers away or ten kilometers away, sometimes you're like, I'm sorry, what? I didn't catch that. But you never feel, oh, I'm terrible because I don't understand. You just know that, okay, this person's speaking style is different from my person, my speaking style. Uh, even, even though we're both from Britain, even though our towns are not far apart, this town has a slightly different speaking style. I don't feel bad that I don't understand. I'll just ask, what do you mean? Or could you say that again? And the further away you go, the bigger the gap becomes. I was talking to a guy from Scotland, from Glasgow, and many times, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What was that? Oh, okay, like that. Because our speaking styles were really quite different. So you can imagine if you're from a different country, or if you're a non-native speaker, then the gap gets wider and wider. Uh, another part of successful communication uh, is knowledge. Uh, it's easier for me to talk to other people who have, for example, a, a college education, a university education, uh, because we share a lot of the same background uh, and maybe not so easy or not so smooth to talk to people from a different background. Uh, of course, if I know something, if I'm talking about fishing, and you don't know about fishing, then I'm going to have to explain some fishing language to you. And of course, you shouldn't feel bad about not knowing about fishing. I know about fishing, you don't know about fishing. It's my responsibility to explain. It's not your problem that you don't know about fishing. This person is going to give you the knowledge about fishing. So again, if you go to a different country, you have different knowledge in some cases. Okay? Uh, Oyster cards is an example of knowledge that only people from London have or people from England have. This is, of course, very closely tied to culture. Some things are understood because that's the culture of the country. So I understand we do this. Somebody from outside that culture doesn't know that we do this. Again, nobody is bad or good or right or wrong. Just somebody knows and somebody doesn't know. And if you don't know, you just ask for the explanation. Easy. 
Um, this, of course, is all very closely tied up to uh, the vocabulary people use and the idioms people use in a particular area, a particular town, a particular region, a particular country. I have things that I say that other countries don't say. Okay. Uh, again, you might say oyster card is an example of vocabulary that's only understood uh, in a certain area of England. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then not knowing oyster card, as I said, is not an English problem. Uh, it's a problem of knowledge, a gap in culture, a, a difference in, 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 in vocabulary. Uh, in Japan, this is an ikoka card. In London, this is an oyster card. Okay? It's just a gap in vocabulary. Neither word uh, is better than the other word. And it's not my problem, it's not my fault if I don't know. In Japan, this is called an Ikoka card, or even just in Kansai, this is called an Ikoka card. In, in, uh, in Tokyo, it's called a Matsuika card. Okay, so it's different in different places. Okay, so um, often when you hear something and you don't understand it, uh, often it's because it's from a different culture or a different place, or there's a gap in the knowledge between the two speakers. Okay, uh, so there's no need to feel bad about this. One person has the knowledge, one person doesn't have the knowledge. Please ask, what does this mean? What did you say? Could you explain that? And the other person can explain that because they used that word. They know what this word means. They know what Oyster Card means. They can explain it to you. This is why you should never feel bad about a gap in understanding. Uh, often it's not a gap in your English knowledge. Often it's a gap in your cultural knowledge. Uh, and the best way to deal with that is through communication. Use your Swiss Army knife to get the meaning from the other person. Then the conversation continues. 